disco was made for the dance floors and to, to make people dance. Yeah, since the beginning I was obsessed from this kind of 12-inch extended disco versions with long intros, uh, long breaks, kind of dubby version of songs. So that's what I really like on disco music. I knew the, the Unidisc um, back catalogue will be huge, but as I got uh, access uh, to the catalogue I was pretty impressed. Um, I had a kind of a list, uh, top three list, and Manergy was, was of course on top of the list, but uh, it took me a while to go through uh, the whole catalogue. I realized how big it is and how many good songs. I was just smiling the whole time scrolling through uh, the songs. There are a lot of songs I really like and, and play since many years. Lime is one of those artists. The song uh, Last Night the DJ Saved My Life, of course, is, is one of those songs. But at the end, I knew uh, Manergy will be the right song because um, from the beginning on, I always loved the song, especially this long intro and this, the musical skills uh, from Patrick are just amazing. And I realized it again after I got the single stamps, what, what a genius he was. <laughs> His musical skills, his way he created sounds was just different from everything else. That's why the approach on my remix was um, to be as close as possible to the original one, just try to transport the original vibe. That's why I used most of the uh, original sounds. I just rearranged everything, just polished uh, the beats, made it a bit more uh, groovy but I try to keep the original vibe, especially uh, Sylvester's uh, voice. So it was really important for me to, to, to keep the vibe. I think my first contact with uh, Sylvester and Patrick Corley was Do You Wanna Funk? And the first 30 seconds, the cowbells, the drums, um, the crew, they're so amazing. I just fell in love with the song. And then this bass line and the way he was singing the song, it was just, just different from everything else and I totally fell in love with this song. That's why I started working on Body Funk uh, as a mashup for my sets. So I just took this uh, beat loop from Do You Wanna Funk with the cowbells and everything with what kind of a signature drum loop at that time. Um, and I just added a, a Italo disco bass line, then added a, a cappella from Hot Streak and I started playing this in my sets and it worked so well that we decided to clear the samples and to release it. And, but everything started as a mashup and it, it literally started with the, with the Do You Want A Punk drum loop. I grew up in, in the east part of Germany and um, of course the music were centered and limited, but I was actually too young to realize it. So for me, I mean, I was nine and the wall was falling down. So um, I was not into music at that time. But uh, I just realized it, beginning of 90s, me and my parents and my sister, we went for the first time to the west part of Germany, and um, I think it was Munich, and then we went to a record store, it was called Media Markt, and I've seen just walls full of vinyls, CDs and everything, and it was actually the first time I realized, okay, I think now we have access to, to everything, to all kind of music. And then from that day on, I knew, okay, I'm, I'm obsessed with music. I just want to, to uh, spend all my money on music, what I did and, and yeah, what paid off obviously then. I'm uh, still on the hunt for, for new records and, and listening a lot to promos and new demos. But uh, when I'm on tour and um, I have three, four hours off, um, I'm, I'm always trying to find the record store around. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find some new stuff, new music, music I never experienced before, especially when I'm in South America or in America. You will always find songs, artists, records you've never heard or seen before. So this is really cool to dig into this kind of music. My first contact with uh, sampling was uh, Daft Punk's album Homework. So I was so mind-blowing for me because it was a totally different approach or a different way 
also create music and I realized sampling is art for me. So if you do it right, if you do it proper and don't just uh, sample the whole song and if you just sample, then chop things, then put it together in a different way, it's, it's, it's art for me. So that's why uh, this way to produce music became also uh, really important for, for my music, of course. Every weekend uh, when I'm on tour and then looking at the crowd, I realize there are just so many different generations dancing, enjoying disco music together. Even the young generation, the Generation X, are really into this kind of music. It's not just disco music for the old generation, also and the young generations having access to this kind of music. Um, it's like everyone just wants to have fun, want to dance, want to enjoy the music and this kind of positive vibe of disco is, is, is I think the most important thing. Disco music was born at the, at the gay clubs and then from this kind of subculture became big and, and, and more commercial and uh, yeah then everyone had access uh, to this kind of music so for me what I, what I realized um, I mean, I played so many shows all around the world, realizing that disco is music for everyone. No one cares about anything there. Everyone is equal on the dance floor. For me, this is the most important thing, that the music, and, and especially also disco music, connects people. And they actually share the same passion for music. Music brings them together, and, and this is good to see. I mean, we live in such a difficult world and with a lot of problems and racism and, and stuff like this. So I think it's, it's really important um, to share music together and to, to share our passion for music. Disco became really uh, respected and credible again. So of course it's close to the border of being cheesy, but um, I mean, there's a lot of good music, also obscure disco funk sounds. It's not just the, the, the disco pop hits from, from the 70s and the 80s. So that's also what I really like on disco. So the genre is so bright and so eclectic. It's, it's not just uh, one or two or three uh, big songs. And I, I know disco became quite big right now and, and big artists like The Weeknd or Dua Lipa are back with this kind of uh, sound. So I, I really appreciate this because it helps also to bring guys like me back on the radar. Since so many years, I'm, I'm such a big fan of Chromeo and uh, as I was young, I flew to London a few times to see them live. In interviews, they always said that, yeah, they came from Montreal and it's such a great city. Yeah, as I played my first America and North America show, I said I have to play in Montreal because I heard so many good things about it. I think it's the right fit for my music. I just loved it. I, I just fell in love with the city and I love the vibe. I love the people there. It's a different vibe to, to all the other uh, Canadian cities. I can totally agree that everyone calls it Disco's uh, second city. I, I felt that the people are really into it and, and they are really familiar with this kind of disco sound. Always good times there. Last but not least, I just wanted to say happy birthday to Unity's 40 years. There's such a strong catalog and I just, I just love to share the music. I just love to listen to the music. Yeah, just keep doing what, what you do and, and share the passion with everyone else. Bye.